East Coast Inferno, a Nas versus Jay-Z beef. What's up, ballers? We are back at it again with another celebrity rap beef breakdown. A really good one, too. Today, we're diving deep into one of hip-hop's most legendary beefs, Nas versus Jay-Z. This wasn't just two rappers dissing each other. It was a lyrical war that redefined the genre. Grab your popcorn and get comfy because we're about to break down the history, the diss tracks, and the epic fallout, the seeds of dissatisfaction. In the late 90s, New York hip hop was a vibrant scene. Nas, the lyrical king, reigned supreme after his iconic debut, Illmatic. However, the air crackled with unspoken tension. The notorious B.I.G.'s legacy was still fresh and the Wu-Tang Clan offered a complex counterpoint. West Coast echoes from Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg lingered, while new voices like DMX and Lauryn Hill pushed boundaries. This was the competitive landscape where Nas and Jay-Z emerged. Nas, with his social commentary, stood in a lineage of lyrical giants. Jay-Z, the hustler turned rapper, reflected the changing times with his focus on success. The tension between Nas and Jay-Z started subtly in 1996. Nas reportedly missed a recording session for Jay-Z's debut album, Reasonable Doubt. The album featured a sample from Nas's song and a music video with Alexis, which Nas also referenced in his own song. This, along with a line by Jay-Z mentioning top MCs, including himself and Nas, planted the seeds of a potential rivalry. In 1997, things escalated slightly. Jay-Z sampled Nas's voice again, but also seemingly took a shot at him on another track. Then, following the death of Biggie Smalls, Jay-Z declared himself the new king of New York rap. This laid the foundation for tensions to later arise between the two hip-hop heavyweights. Memphis Bleak. Some of you might be wondering who is Memphis Bleak? Well, Memphis Bleak was a Rockefeller rapper and at the time Jay-Z's protege. He entered the fray in 1999 with a song that some felt mirrored Nas's style. Nas responded with a diss track referencing Bleak's lyrics. Memphis then fired back with a more aggressive diss aimed directly at Nas. The Takeover. The year is now 2001 it was only a matter of time while tensions simmered before it boiled over. Nas's career at this point seemed shaky, and Jay-Z dropped the infamous takeover on his album, The Blueprint. This scathing diss track called Nas a one-hit wonder and questioned his authenticity. Many fans around this time believed Nas's career was finished. Jay rapped, you made it a hot line, I made it a hot song, referring to Jay-Z sampling a line from Nas the World Is Yours on his song Dead Presidents 2. Nas felt the sample was misused. Jay-Z argues he transformed it into a successful song. Jay rapped one hot album every 10 year average. This was a brutal jab at Nas's perceived inconsistency. Jay-Z implies Nas only has one truly great album, Illmatic, and struggles to maintain that level with subsequent releases. These are just a few examples. Takeover is full of disses, many laced with wordplay. This diss sparked a firestorm, the etheric annihilation. Nas responded with a nuclear bomb of a diss track, Ether. It was a lyrical masterclass that exposed Jay-Z's supposed ghostwriting, questioned his authenticity, and even poked fun at his fashion sense. Nas starts by questioning Jay-Z's whole persona. The line goes, you stole from KRS-One, you stole from Big L, you stole from cannabis, you a thief with no skills. Nas is accusing him of stealing styles from other rappers. It's like saying Jay-Z's whole identity is a cheap copy. Then comes the brutal honesty. Nas rips into Jay-Z's claims of being a street hustler. He raps, you went from drug dealer to wearing pink suits, talking about bricks like you still on the routes. Basically saying, Jay-Z talks the talk, but never walk the walk. It gets even messier. Nas throws shade at Jay-Z for disrespecting the legendary Biggie Smalls. Nas raps, claiming King of New York with a hollow voice, while Biggie Smalls rotten in the Royce. Nas is saying, Jay-Z doesn't deserve the crown while Biggie's memory is still fresh. And to twist the knife further, Nas throws in how Eminem murdered Jay-Z on their own song. But Nas doesn't stop there. He goes for the jugular, hitting Jay-Z where it hurts, his looks. You are ugly, 
he raps, a low blow aimed at Jay-Z's personal life. Ether wasn't just a diss track, it was an attempt to dismantle Jay-Z's entire image, lyrically and personally. It was a brutal takedown, and it cemented Ether as one of the greatest diss tracks ever. The Retaliation and Escalation, 2001 to 2002. Jay-Z couldn't stay silent. He responded with a series of disses, including the infamous Super Ugly mixtape track. Here's where things got personal and controversial. Line, your daughter got mouth on her. Maybe I should have hit early. In the car with the heater, result of the sneaky link dearly. This line referenced Nas's daughter and a rumored fling drawing criticism from fans and even Jay-Z's own mother. The beef became intensely personal. The Final Flurry, 2002 to 2006. Both rappers continued to trade barbs on various tracks. Nas maintained his focus on lyrical attacks while Jay-Z countered with boasts of his success and wealth. In one of Nas's shots, he says, you went pop, sold out, became an industry mascot. And on the other side, Jay-Z says, I'm on my private jet, you stuck on the tour bus. The ceasefire and legacy, 2006 present. As both rappers reached commercial heights and hip hop evolved, the beef slowly faded. A final truce was cemented in 2006 with their collaboration, Black Republican. The Nas Jay-Z feud may be over, but its impact is undeniable. It pushed both rappers to new lyrical heights, redefined diss tracks forever, and became a cornerstone of East Coast hip hop history. So what do you think? These legends put the beef to rest, but who do you think won this rap battle?